Right, hello, and welcome back to another video. So for the next set of videos, we're gonna be looking at vectors uh, and how we can use them in our materials uh, and do maths with those. So first one here is going to be normalize. So if we open this up, what the normalize input or the normalize uh, operator does uh, is it takes a vector, uh, a direction vector of any length uh, and then normalizes it or, or makes it so that it has the length of one. So for example, uh, if I have a vector here that is five units in red, one unit in green, uh, and if I just bring in my pen, if we start here, so five units across, one, two, three, four, five, and then one unit up, there we are, that's our points. So our vector currently is that one. That's great, that's defining a direction. Um, you can see it defines this direction up here. Uh, but the length of the unit is not one. Uh, and when we're doing calculations with uh, directions, when we're comparing directions or, or calculating new directions, we don't want to have a length to be involved. We don't want length, a length component. Uh, we just want everything to have a length of one. <coughs> Makes all the maths easier. Uh, and so what we do is we normalize it. <coughs> so the normalized node here will take this input vector, 510, and convert it to be the same direction, it's not very straight, uh, but with a length of one. Um, and you can see here the output. I'm just visualizing it with a debug float 3, um, 0 0.9, or 0 0.9805, 0 0.1961. Uh, so this vector here, uh, if I just duplicate that and copy it, 0 0.9805, 0 0.1961 uh, will be exactly the same um, direction as 510. Uh, note the way Unreal renders these as colors, they're not the same. Um, but in terms of directions, if I normalize this, it's going to be the same, 0 0.9805. And so that's what the, the normalize function does, is it calculates um, the directional component of a, of a vector, of a direction vector. Um, very useful, important to do before we do any maths with our vectors uh, in a lot of cases. Okay, uh, speaking of maths with vectors, <coughs> we're going to cover the dot product. Uh, this is a uh, mathematical operator uh, and it allows us to compare two direction vectors. Um, here we've got these normalizers, uh, making sure that we've normalized them, uh, and it gives us an output based on how closely the two direction vectors match. So, for example, maybe I'll use the little arrow. If we've got this direction and we did the dot product with this direction, they're exactly the same direction, bar my a bit of ability to draw a straight line, um, and so we get a value of one, <coughs> and we'll do a value of one. If we had two direction vectors where they were at 90 degrees to each other, we would get a value of zero, uh, and two direction vectors that were at completely opposite directions, we would get a value of minus one. Uh, let's do that, uh, and then sort of the the halves as well. So if we do uh, this way and say this way, try and get the same length. Uh, this would be somewhere around 0.5. So it's comparing the two vectors, uh, the two directions. This would be a bit more like 0 0.7, 0 0.7, something like that. Anyway, um, comparing the two directions, seeing how similarly they are to each other. If they're exactly the same, that's a value of 1. If they're completely opposite directions, um, that's minus one, and if they're at right angles, 90 degrees to each other, that gives us a value of zero. So it's converting our vector threes into a scalar output. Um, and if I just delete these, clean this up, uh, we can see this. So here, these two values are exactly the same. They're both in the uh, red direction, positive red axis, uh, and dotted, they will give us uh, a value of one. If we did a value here of green, or uh, in the green axis, we get a value of zero because there is no component there that uh, points in the same direction. And if we did minus red, we'll get minus one because we're now going in the opposite direction. Um, if we do some arbitrary value, it's going to say how how similar is this direction to the x-axis? And it's apparently a similarity of about 0.29. Um, and the normalize here is for taking into account any vectors that are over one. And in fact, that vector that I just plugged in was already over one, and here it'll, it'll do that. Uh, if we don't normalize, we'll get an incorrect result. Um, so 
something to be aware of. So here we are. That's what the dot product does. It's comparing two vectors. Um, so in this case, uh, vectors that are the same. And if we were to plug in something like five here, the directional component of this is, is still just going to be the same positive red or positive x. Uh, and so the dot product is still giving us one. Here, these are orthogonal, uh, or rather, they, they do not have any component facing each other. Um, and so you get a value of zero. And opposite vectors here uh, give us uh, a value of minus one. Now, this is incredibly useful for doing any kind of comparison between surfaces and angles and things like that. Uh, one of the most common which uh, is the Fresnel uh, term or the Fresnel component. So if I bring in a sphere here, um, this is a calculation used a lot in lighting. Uh, it can be used a lot in VFX things. Um, but basically, it's a comparison between the camera surface or the camera direction uh, and the surface normal. Uh, and we'll cover both of these nodes in a bit more detail in the input data um, examples later. Um, but basically, we're comparing the way we're looking with the way the surface is. And on a sphere, we get this result, where it's white where we're facing and black around the edges. If I had to put this on a, on a cube, you can see we're getting this, um, this result here. So a way of comparing um, what you're looking at, uh, and the, well, the surface you're looking at and the angle you're looking at it from. Um, very, very useful. We use it all the time. Um, lastly, uh, a little sort of sneaky trick. Uh, we can use the dot product a bit like a component mask. So right back in the first of these um, this series, we looked at the component mask as a way of accessing data from inside a, another piece of data. So in this case, we have this um, sort of rainbow gradient texture. Um, and if we use the mask, um, we can get access to just the green channel. But if we were to take our, uh, our colors here, our RGB data, think about them as if they were direction vectors, and then say, well, if I dot with green, I'm only going to get information where my green channel is. Because anything that's in red or blue is going to be orthogonal, effectively, to that green that we've selected here. And so we can use this, um, this, this vector 4 as a channel selector. Um, and then we could also combine as well, which works quite nicely. So now we've combined the red and green data. Um, a little uh, extra trick you can do with the um, the dot product and comparing things. Um, we'll be covering this uh, a lot in various examples. Um, useful for making things like world up shaders, stuff like that. If you want snow on rocks, well, you know where the rock is, you know the surface normal, you know where the world up direction is. You can do a dot product, compare those two, um, and create kind of like a dynamic mask and that kind of thing. So uh, we'll be looking at that in some of the future examples. Okay, next one, while we're on uh, vectors. Um, so with the dot product is a comparison of two vectors that calculates the um, sort of alignment or similarity in alignments. Um, the cross product finds the third orthogonal vector. So what does that mean? Well, whenever we have a, sort of an axis system, we have two directions here, X and Y. Um, and if we want to calculate Z, then we need the cross product, and that will do that for us. So it will find the third direction from um, from two input vectors. So here, if we input red and green, it's going to output blue. So it's giving us the direction vector that matches this uh, this axis system, this coordinate system, and calculates the third one. Useful for a few things. Um, generally, or well, the most sort of common place I've used it is with uh, foliage calculations or foliage movement. If you've got uh, a tree that bends with the wind, you sometimes want to have kind of crosswind and you want that to be dynamic based on the wind direction. And so by using the cross product, you can calculate the kind of crosswind direction, um, which works quite nicely. Um, and again, we'll cover that in some future examples as well. Okay, uh, jumping on a little bit, but something that makes sense, I think, in the context of what we're just talking about, uh, is this one, derive normal z. And so what this does uh, is a sort of similar thing, um, but per pixel. And so what this does, um, if we think about our normal map and what our normal map contains, 
uh, we have, let's say, a bumpy surface, and then we have a low poly that we have baked our, our bumpy surface down to. So what happens is each pixel takes the direction that light would hit at this point uh, and encodes it to our texture. So in this case, you've got the different normals, the way light would bounce off, and you'd get a kind of curvature in your in your normal map uh, here. Now, what it's encoding is a direction vector. Now we talked about normalize. Um, when we deal with direction vectors, we have them normalized. So we have them have a length of one. And what that means, if we think back to our um, maths classes at school, if we have a triangle, and we have a length of one, which is our direction vector here, we can use Pythagoras to calculate our, um, our three sides. So the formula x squared plus y squared equals z squared. So the square of this side, that's not square, but I have to take my word for it, this square and this square. So the square of this side here and the square of this side here add up to the square of this side here. So using this, we can work out where we've got um, where we've got two of the sides, two of the angles, two of the directions. Um, we can calculate the third. And that's what this function does here for us. Derive normal z. <coughs> um, Unreal sort of does this automatically for us. Um, so in this case, if we have a normal map, using the normal map compression, if I zoom right in, you can see it's reasonably high quality. If I change this to default DXD compression, it's going to give me an error. I kind of want to see that at once. There we go. Um, can you see with the default compression, it's a bit blockier, a bit more um, compressed. There's a few more errors in this. Those errors are very, very obvious when we're looking at lighting and normals. It's very, um, yeah, it's very clear. That there's the compression artifacts there and so what's happening is with a normal map compression it's taking the red data and the green data and compressing them into two different channels each with eight bits of compression data um, and then discarding the blue channel and then in the shader it's using the um where are we put that back in again that should be fine now compile this it should come back because i've turned it back to normal there it is. Um, it's taking that red and green data and deriving it. It's calculating the Z channel. And it does this automatically for us. Um, but there are times when you might want to um, to access uh, or, or edit the red and green channels separately. Um, and then you can use this function to re-derive uh, the normal data. Um, this is the standard Unreal workflow. It's what they recommend. I think quality-wise, you get the best quality. Uh, it is possible you want uh, to pack your normals with red and green and then pack something else into blue so a height map or an ambient occlusion or something like that and then use this derived normal z to unpack it in your in your shaders um, the advantage of that is saving texture memory the disadvantage is you'll get crosstalk and so whatever you pack in the blue channel might affect the red and green channels because they're being compressed together um, and so because of that it's uh, i don't think it's worth it um, you can generally get away with a slightly n smaller normal map texture size because you're using a higher compression ratio. And so it's all about balance and trade-off. Um, but you might see sometimes uh, normals are packed red-green and derive z. And it's because they're normalized, because they have that length of 1, we can use Pythagoras to, uh, to calculate that back. Okay, uh, lots of stuff about vectors. Um, as I say, we'll be using these a lot throughout the, the various work examples we'll be doing later. Um, but normalize taking the length component and removing it. Uh, so it divides by the length uh, to just give us a directional component or the directional sort of part of it. So in this case, 510 clamped back or normalized um, into a unit length of one. Then we have the, the dot product as a way of comparing vectors. So uh, the dot of two normalized vectors will give us um, a comparison or a, a ratio of how similar the vectors are in terms of their direction. So in this case, um, exactly the same. Here, no component whatsoever. If 
afraid it is 0.5.5. What result do I get here? 0.7. So uh, a vector that's 45 degrees is actually 0.7 similar to that one, uh, which makes sense when you sort of draw it out. Um, or opposite vectors. So in the other direction gives us a value of negative one. Um, very useful. Then the cross product uh, and sort of goes hand in hand with the dot product in terms of being a, uh, a vector operator. And in this case, it is <coughs> take calculating the third orthogonal vector. And again, we'll use this once or twice in some of the worked examples. Uh, and then finally, um, maybe a little bit different, but I think it kind of makes sense in this context. Similar to here where we've calculated the third vector, well here we can calculate the third pixel or the third uh, color channel. So taking the red and green data, which looks like so, and then reusing that um, to derive the, the normal map, which looks the same as the input normal map. A um, few extra pixel costs um, versus just plugging this in directly. Obviously, we're doing a bit of calculations here. So that's 44. And that's now going to be 43. So actually, it's telling me it's cheaper to derive. It doesn't make sense. So ignore that. I can't be right. Um, but yeah, um, calculating the third channel from the second, from the first two, uh, which Unreal is already doing for us using the normal map compression, saving things in red and green. If there was anything in the blue channel, um, you wouldn't see it. Um, if you want to know more about the compression and normal maps and, and all that, um, there is a video on my YouTube channel where I explain uh, that in a bit more detail, so you can go and check that out as well. Okay.